She knows I'm going to put her outside. She likes to come inside for an egg. Yes, an egg. I usually give her an egg a day. So, got my cradle set up here for my baby. She is doing great. Her name is going to be Ryla Ray. So, if you're not, if you're new to my channel, uh, we are a homesteading family. We have a little acreage and we want to be more self-sustainable, but be in community as well. But I am going to be going into school soon. I want to become a nurse and then a nurse practitioner to be able to help people in a more functional way, um, help them with their health. And it's a huge passion of mine because Nayeli uh, went through some health issues and is uh, still has an abnormal MRI, which we're gonna get uh, us even a higher opinion of uh, with CHOPS Hospital, but clinically she's doing really good. Um, and she's doing good in her kindergarten class too. She's uh, drawing, learning her letters, ABCs and everything, but she had a neurological problem where she went down and it had to do with mold toxicity and the mold toxicity causing a gluten allergy. And that gluten allergy, um, I, I have a theory on that that I won't go into because this video is about carnivore. Carnivore diet, why even carnivore? So I was thinking to myself, oh my goodness, people are gonna be like, well, why does she wanna go carnivore? Because she's got like all this uh, ideas for planting food and all these things. And um, the, the, the thing is, is that with the, is this a video about carnivore? Why carnivore? Or is it a video about pregnancy and carnivore? Hmm. How long does this video need to be? I could go on and on. The reason why I think carnivore is helping so many people is because we are so nutritionally deficient. Our soils are nutritionally deficient. Our food is nutritionally deficient. Our glyphosate in our food is making the food nutritionally deficient and it is preventing us from getting a lot of nutrition. The antibiotics and the medicines that we use, they all um, interfere with our absorption of nutrients, affect our gut lining, uh, affect our digestion, affect our sleep, affect, there's so many biotoxins around us that um, carnivore is is an enticing thing, but it can be a band-aid to uh, nutritional other nutritional deficiencies and um, help of some people need extra help on getting out the mold toxins from their body or they are living in a home that has mold. Mold is going to keep you in a perpetual state of chronic deficiencies in the body and so a lot of people that are eating carnivore I feel like get relief because they're just getting their bucket of toxins and um and and stuff uh uh they're just able to to feel better because they are doing that kind of diet and lifestyle uh and then some people are doing carnivore and they're not feeling better um and a lot of those people I believe that they're, they're living in in a mold environment and they're not getting any relief and there's really a lot of tax on their body or they're already um there's already quite a bit of fungus in their body okay moving on for the involvement of uh, endobiont is fungi fungal stage it evolves into fungi fungi are the basis of every chronic degenerative disease from an old uh, from from a hay fever as asthma eczema to heart disease to um, rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis, Hashimoto, lupus, to cancer. Cancer is a fungal of growth in the body because only fungi, fungi can handle that situation at that stage. And fungal stage, fungi are very special. They are um, both plants and animals because in evolution of creatures on our planet, fungi are at the point where evolution then splits into the plant kingdom and the animal kingdom. And fungi are both. They're both. And their purpose, fungal, fungal stage, is to dismantle the human body, to kill it, basically, slowly. Slowly, or maybe a bit faster, or maybe a bit slower. So behind every chronic degenerative disease, there is a fungal overgrowth because the endobiont... Okay, 
Well, I believe it's very important for you to know if you are living in a moldy environment, it can prevent you from getting pregnant and it can make you have fertility issues. But let's get on to, okay, why? So why carnivore? So why am I doing carnivore? Uh, well, I'm not quite because um, I, I, don't, I don't know what you would call it. I, I mean, I have a little bit of like honey in the morning with my coffee and I also have like a piece of fruit or two. And then Christmas, I had uh, quite a bit of cookies. So that's all not carnivore. But in general, I do that in the morning. And then uh, in the evening and afternoon, I'm only eating meat, a lot of it, and lots of eggs. And so, and butter, I love butter. I'm also supplementing, so I'll, I'll say, and there are some major points that I do want to make about the pregnancy and uh, carnivore, but I supplement with um, vitamin D, K2, I, uh, from Jill Krista's website. I supplement with a new chapter multivitamin, and I supplement with iodine, Lugol's iodine, and I take quite a bit of borax baths, or I take a fructo... Uh, a fructo calcium borate, calcium fructo borate of six milligrams. Um, but before, before carnivore, I mean, before pregnancy, I was um, taking about 100 milligrams of boron a day, borax, boron, getting 100 milligrams of boron and 100 milligrams of iodine. Now I've changed it to 50 milligrams of iodine and like six milligrams of boron and some borax baths, you know, borax Epsom salt baths. So uh, those are fabulous. Um, okay, so is carnivore safe to go, is it safe to go mid-pregnancy on carnivore? There's one precaution. There's a couple things that I think are important to consider. If you are eating a lot of oxalates in your diet, so oxalates from foods, uh, different foods, some people are holding on to oxalates more than others. And I believe that it has to do with underlying health issues in the first place. But what can happen is if you just cut out all of the oxalate foods, like spinach is high in oxalates, um, carrots, uh, some other oxalate foods, you can have an oxalate dumping, which can cause health issues. Um, it's an, overwhelm, uh, an overwhelming of oxalates in your blood, and that can make you feel sick and, and then make you have symptoms and um, just cause it to, to cause your body to not feel good. Another, I guess, group of people that are risky with just going zero carb all of a sudden is pregnant women or women that are nursing their children because they may start dumping into their children. Can you explain a little bit about that and maybe some anecdotal stories? Yes. So the oxalate in your blood, right? It goes from your food into your blood passes through the placenta. So a pregnant woman is passing on oxalate to a developing fetus. And the breast cells, especially when they're making breast milk, because they handle calcium so well, tend to attract oxalate as many glands do. I mean, all glands seem to pick up a lot of oxalate. So your thyroid gland, your breast glands, your sebum, your, you name a gland and it, in endocrine or exergen, they're potentially a place where oxalate hangs out. So here's one story. And I've had a, a several of these, but this one is the most dramatic and most heartbreaking where a keto family, a keto couple who are eating full keto um, with like muffins and so on made from almond flour were stayed keto through their second pregnancy. And right when they gave birth to the second child, they switched to full carnivore and the breastfeeding for this baby did not go well. The, the glands and ducts were clogging and none of the typical way remedies for getting the breast clogs to fix were working until whole crystals, quite obvious big crystals would push out of the nipples. And at the same time, the baby would have diaper rash and be fussy and feel sick. The baby would be sick at the same time that this oxalate dump was happening in the breast milk. And this child, she's now three, 
she's had struggles with going in and out of feeling awful and going from angel child to devil child and back and forth because she's on and off clearing this, this clearing of oxalate from her body and all of us is usually cyclical. So you Mm -hmm. get little bouts, you feel terrible for some amount of time, and then you can feel pretty good for a short time. And then you can go back into feeling bad. So she, this little child has not had an easy time. Now they have a third child who's five months old. And this child is having seizures now. And the breast milk from mom at three years out from switching from keto is now a still heavily dumping, not with the obvious crystals anymore, but we're seeing it in the child who's, they had a neuro evaluation and so on, but it's uh, affecting the whole family for a long, it'll be a long time problem the whole family has to deal with. And the dad has been quite sick uh, for the last three years. Well, actually for the last year and year and a bit. So it took him almost three years before he started to feel oxalate sick. He went to full carnivore and was just about three years before he got anything at all. And I think now the wife is three and a half years out and she's still, this is actually the third year in my view is the heaviest year. If you've started obvious clearing oxalates early on, third year can be the heaviest, hardest year of oxalate okay. coming out. It is a long process. So, and children are especially vulnerable to the effects of oxalate. And we didn't really talk about all the effects that oxalate has. And that's fascinating. It's a long laundry list of ways that cells are being damaged and tissues are being damaged by oxalate. But the most fundamental one is mineral deficiencies developing, especially calcium deficiency, because oxalate binds calcium in the food, in the blood, in the tissues. And calcium deficiency is devastating to children's growth. Devastating. So if that couple, I mean, if that family, for example, were to increase their calcium consumption, dairy, and maybe even add a little bit back of the oxalates, would they start mitigating some of the pain and illness that they're experiencing. Yes. Okay. Yes. Calcium can really lower the pain. Calcium at bedtime improves sleep. It improves all of this. And um, getting the mom to eat more oxalate would be the mm-hmm. answer to slow down, to so clean up her breast milk. Uh, th- very important to like stop all this heavy clearing. Do I believe that those foods are toxic? Actually don't. But what happens is at this time there are so many people that are have these chronic issues that it's hard for their liver it's hard for their liver to convert a lot of these things and to process out a lot of uh plant toxins and so we've gotten to a a place where a lot of people feel better on carnivore um, i believe because they are reducing their toxin load in general. They're also reducing the load of glyphosate that they're consuming. And if they were consuming organic, they're reducing their toxin load with of the plant, plant toxins, but they're also reducing um, drift from glyphosate that could be on the plants themselves. And also, depending on the soils that those plants are grown in, they could be stressing the plant out it could be stressed out so much so that there are plants that are creating more oxalates in themselves the idea that plants also could be oxalate poisoned is potential and so we don't even check the soil for boron boron now you know i love boron i love iodine and boron those are the those iodine boron and fat soluble vitamins were the those were the things that were really helped me a lot heal a lot not going carnivore not didn't already have uh didn't have gluten in my diet but uh i was eating carbs i was eating quite a bit of carbs and fruit and so uh i healed so much so many things by uh by just the higher dose iodine and boron and i probably wouldn't have had to do higher dose boron and iodine if i had gone um carnivore or more super meat heavy now um so the oxalates oxalates can be produced by fungus as well in your body so you can have um just kind of like latent infection in your body a lot of chronic illnesses the microbiome is fungal dominant so 
when you have fungal dominance in your body, you, the potential for creating all sorts of issues is greater because the fungus is perpetuating nutritional deficiencies and it's not leaving you alone. It's, it's, it's wanting to digest you. It's wanting to decompose you. It's wanting to kill you. So, um, oxalates. So that's something to consider. If you're going mid-pregnancy, mid-pregnancy carnivore. Also, something to consider is the electrolyte imbalances and what and if that could harm the baby or not. It's important to get enough salt when you do carnivore, especially at first and all the electrolytes because you are going to be peeing out a lot of water that your otherwise the carbohydrates and the glucose would keep kind of in your body. So, uh, not that it, you're not that you're dehydrating yourself unless you are because you need to eat more salt. Um, but you uh, so boron, I feel like can help both of those things. To a large extent, I didn't have any signs of oxalate dumping, but I believe that's because I was on boron, 100 milligrams of boron for so long, and I healed. My back pain was healed. My um, hip pain was healed. My, you know, just, you know, hormone balance and hair growth and all this stuff. So I believe that, um, I know that boron can help you hang on to more of your magnesium and your calcium and i think it's phos i don't know if it's phosphate or potassium or both um let me check real quick okay i'm just gonna throw it up on the screen whether it's potassium or phosphorus or or both uh, but it they can it can help you hang on it. It also helps you produce. It helps your hormones regulate. I mean, iodine does too. Iodine helps your neurotransmitters and your hormones regulate. So iodine and boron can help balance your hormones. Also, my thyroid health was much better after doing high dose iodine and boron together. So my labs went from um, seemingly a little bit of hyperthyroid to and with high reverse t3 to unremarkable labs the doctor said unremarkable labs so i i am blessed by that and that happened before carnivore and a lot of people are getting relief of some thyroid issues just going carnivore but uh, I really think that the iodine deficiency in our country is massive. It's funny because on the Mayo, when I, I think it was Mayo's webpage, it was saying, oh, you, um, there's not a, a deficiency of iodine in our country because, um, because we, we, we have iodine in our salt, of which we do not have enough of iodine in our salt. Uh, and iodine is not, is dissipates, so it can go out of the salt and it can just not be in the salt. But um, it's like iodine, um, but in this next sentence it says, but we get enough salt in the food that we cook for ourselves. So this is basically telling you not to eat salt. So how the heck are these people getting iodine? And, and it's not just the young children that need iodine we need iodine for our immune system massively we need iodine for a lot of processes in our body all of our cells need iodine i won't get into it we're talking about pregnancy right so something that i noticed so mid-pregnancy i go carnivore ish mostly carnivore i mean you know like after after the morning i was just loads of carnivore and very few days of going to my mom's and eating um, eating a soup or something or uh, anything that I could choose on like one meal a week was more heavy carnivore if I could choose uh, or not. But uh, I noticed that, so I don't know if this was just a resolve 
that would have resolved anyway, but I had a little bit of sciatic nerve problem in my butt. That resolved after going carnivore, after a while, a little while after going carnivore ish. And I also, um, one big thing that I notice is when I reach down and pick up stuff. Now, pregnant women know what I'm talking about, I feel. Most, most of them will. It feels uncomfortable, like your vagina's coming out or something. And uh, it's not fun. And you might even have like Braxton Hicks contractions as you're like reaching down, grabbing things and picking them up off the floor, trying to pick up toys and stuff. I noticed that that went away a lot. Now, now that I'm farther along in pregnancy too, also though, I do notice that my hips are starting to just do the natural progression of, of, of getting loosier, goosier. So, um, and I think that the, a lot of activity, a lot of going up and down the stairs, up and down the stairs and trying to move heavy objects, really, I can feel it in my hips and butt. So I'm like, okay, so I want to kind of lay off of it. If I was super, if I was super muscular beforehand, which I'm not right now, uh, if I was super muscular beforehand, I think that it would have been fine. But okay, so let's see. Folic acid. So another thing. Um, so folic acid, oftentimes a lot of people are actually, they say that this says in a lot of, um, I, I, I don't know how proven science it is, but they say that uh, a lot of people are not processing their folic acid from these synthetic folic acid supplements as well as they would methylfolate. So I take a methylfolate. Also, um, I eat a lot of eggs. So like each day I'm eating four to five eggs and a lot of those eggs come from our chickens who are getting lots of, uh, are foraging a lot and they're getting extra iodine. And they are also, um, it's interesting because uh, Polyface Farms did a study on their eggs and their pastured poultry eggs. Their eggs have 1,038 micromilligrams on average you, to prevent spina bifida uh, in the womb, they, they say to get enough folic acid. They've, so they prescribe to, and they focus on just that, they basically focus on that nutrient alone. Now, they don't even talk about iodine, which I think is weird. <sighs> anyway, well, there are studies that link uh, folic acid consumption, folic acid, not folate, not the stuff that you get from food, the synthetic folic acid to autism. There's a, a, a link there. That doesn't mean that that causes it. It's a link. So processing out that folic acid. I mean, I just, I'm eating four to five eggs a day and I am getting a lot of folate through that. The average egg that is in a cage egg to show the difference between the um, polyface farm pasture raised eggs of 1,038 micromilligrams versus the chicken egg that is in uh, caged birds, chicken eggs, is 48 micromilligrams. So quite a huge difference. Yeah, I would much prefer the other egg because it's got a lot of other awesome nutrients that is, it is dense with. And I wonder how many other nutrients uh, it's heavy in rather than the caged egg. So what you eat matters. So I'm glad that we have our chickens of the chickens of our own that we can give uh, yummy food to, and especially during the winter, we need to um, give them scraps and stuff. So uh, yeah, I think that's all I wanted to say about pregnancy. So those are things to consider electrolyte balance and oxalate dumping especially if you're going mid-pregnancy, but I believe that boron could help all of those things. 
because bor boron actually melts oxalate crystals in the body. And uh, a lot of people don't know that you can supplement uh, with so much boron. The toxicity level of boron is like 20 grams, not milligrams, because you look up some other places and it says 20 milligrams um, is toxic. No, they have done studies of 20 milligrams and that's about as much as they've done a lot of studies with. And they've done studies, they've done a lot more per body weight for uh, animal studies. And they've noticed that uh, a lot of, um, there's a lot of um, insulin resistance uh, decrease in rats that are supplemented. Like some of these studies are like 50 milligrams per ki kilogram, 50 milligrams per kilogram of a body weight. So, I mean, if a rat is one pound, 50 milligrams for a rat that weighs one pound. Yeah, it's just, it's nuts. There's so much more, so much more studies on boron and animals and it's interesting to look into. So, uh, I had a lot of healing with that before pregnancy. I don't know that I would ever do that during pregnancy, especially if you have a boy because there might be some, um, like there might be some hormone issues like with the they've with studies but it that's flexible too because there's some studies that show nothing's happening with the um sex hormones with the with a large amount and so it's just kind of up in the air there so i i'm choosing not to take a ton of boron during my pregnancy because i feel very comfortable now that i've cured my back pain um cured my back pain and other things uh, beforehand, before I was pregnant. And, um, and uh, bone, my hip bone on my, le on my right side um, just felt very weak. And I actually, uh, I wish I got an MRI of it. It would be wonderful to be able to see the bone scans, but I never, I complained about it but the doctor never really did anything about it. So I should have advocated more for myself in that way. So anyway, so thanks for hanging out with me. I hope this was helpful to uh, someone. Goodbye. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>